What is going on, comic fans? Welcome to the Legion of Comics. It's Tuesday. That means it is still New DC Day. While they're still doing it on Tuesdays, we are going to be rocking it here on the channel. I uh, got a nice little book, a nice little stack of books to go over, as well as a weekly giveaway. Some fun stuff to talk. Figure we'd hang out for a bit. Dive into all of that right after this. <music> As always, I do want to give a big shout out and some attention to Big Time Collectibles. If you're in the market for some awesome retailer exclusives, monthly mystery boxes, con exclusives, all of that, you can find it at BigTimeCollectibles.com. You can also follow them on social media if you want to get an idea of when they're dropping, what they're dropping, and never miss out on any pre-sale. Be sure to give them a follow. And if you need anything cleaner press, look no further than Justin's Comics, right over on Instagram. You can find the link to this in the description of all my videos. Let them know you found him via the channel. Take advantage of the special offers that he has running and all that stuff for viewers of the channel. Also, a huge shout out to ABX Comics and Games, my local comic shop. It's where I pick up all my books every week when I get them. And I come here to talk with everybody about that. And there's some comics curing cancer announcements. This year, we will be at Heroes Con Convention in Charlotte, North Carolina. We'll have booth number 1769. We'll have some exclusive, amazing stuff there with us at the con at the booth you don't want to miss out on that be sure to check it out and you can already participate with comics curing cancer by hitting that qr code or going right over to instagram to the comics curing cancer page keep up with all the exclusive stuff that we'll be doing as well this year the official comics curing cancer three-day event will kick off the first week of october this year be sure to mark your calendars you don't want to miss out on that and I think that I think that might be it housekeeping wise. That that could be it housekeeping wise. Now I noticed when I got over here to the stream that I absolutely had the stream set for the wrong time. Had it set for 2:30. So I changed it and hit live. So hopefully people will start getting notified along the way. But say hey to some people. Las Cruces 1971. Hooray, hooray to you too, sir. I hope you're having a good day. Comic Viking, read up the membership there. Oh, yeah, we can also look at and go over some of the stuff that I've picked out so far for the legion loop getting ready and geared up for running the legion loop giveaway the uh, monthly member giveaway that we do right here on the channel brian lcs what is happening there has to be multiple Las Crucius. they're everywhere yeah i was actually just looking at his page earlier today at all the wins whenever he wins something he always does a really nice post and thank you to everybody uh that he gets the stuff from he's like the most deserving person ever that's ever existed of a YouTube win. What is going on, Kevin? Hope you're doing good today. It's like the Joker. There's three of them. Exactly. Exactly. At least three of them. What is going on, Jeremy? Hope you're doing good today as well. Chop and Drop is in the building. How are you doing? What's going on, the Adventurous Joe? Happy new DC day to you. What is going on, Beckerman? I'm here for the DC day at false times. That was a, that was a throw off here at the correct time today. Hector Ortiz, what is going on? Happy New DC Day to you. I actually mailed off your uh, your most your most recent win. That reminded me. I got to the uh, post office today. So I uh, got your tracking number as well as Austin LeMay's that I'll send you guys if y'all need those. But congrats to him for being one of the most recent DC Day winners. Loader's Empire, what is going on? Hope you're doing good today. And uh, for today's giveaway... I do have that in here. We are celebrating the kickoff of a brand new series, one that I'm very excited about. It's called Batman Dark Age. And this is the Frank Quitely variant that we've got for the giveaway today. It's super cool. This is the, I guess it's like a prequel to, a tie-in to, an expansion of. They did Superman Space Age in three issues. It was a Mark Russell and Mike Allred. Three issue event almost it was it was elseworld it stood on its own and uh each issue was 100 pages no ads they're doing it differently for batman dark ages they're doing six issues 48 page per issue but uh like i'm like yo i'm very excited for this that's why you have the uh thumbnail that you have for today's stream but that's going to be given away and then there's this beautiful who did this sozo sozo maki i, I don't know hard name this is Power Girl issue number seven, Sozo Maki variant. Just a wicked, beautiful cover there. I always try to get one of the lovely lady covers for the giveaway. So we'll draw for the winner of those at some point in the stream. Then we'll start pulling all the extra bonuses to go with it. 
Yes, ma'am. Ginger oil. Ginger oil. Do you know where it is in the fridge? Uh, let me check. You should check. Not me, sir. She's talking about ginger oil. But yeah, we got the trading cards, the bookmarks, some swag, stickers, and stuff from ABX. It will add to the good boy. You want me to follow you? So we're going to try something. We're going to try something. All right, let's see. The longest clip I have in here. Do you have your cup? Where's your cup? Get your cup first, and I'll follow you. So I've got a clip. It's one minute and four seconds. John Ramita Jr. clip. I think I'll time this out right. Perfect. I just need the cup. But y'all check out this John Ramita Jr. clip. And, and you're welcome to come use one of the eight easels we have set up for creating art here at the show for consideration for our art options on Saturday for our major auction at 8 p.m. at the Weston Ballroom. And the smaller auctions we'll have here on the convention floor on Sunday starting at wow. noon. That's a flash from the past. So any artist that we have here, either as an exhibitor an artist in yeah. Artist Alley, yeah. or an aspiring yeah. artist, if you'd like to come up and be on stage okay. here at the yeah. art so stage, just screams my fan like, that was just please crazy. come on by. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I just want to shake your hand, man. I love you. work for decades. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys saying those nice words. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I didn't hit the stop. Oh, it's perfect. Hail yes. Hail yes. Perfect timing. Boom. And see, back her nose. Ken, Annika, John. That was a fantastic day. As you can see in the front end of that video, Becker, I was uh, letting Ken know that you told me to tell him hello because you could not be there that year. But you know who was there? Brother John's comics. It was a fantastic year. Yeah, ready, set, go. Managed to get in there and uh, get her some more drink. It's more like ready, set. Here's a clip. Exactly. Exactly, Lisa. No, I see bacon too. What is going on, Scotty? How are you doing today? Phil, hello, hello. But yeah, as always, toward the end of the stream, we'll do the drawing for the giveaway. Appreciate everyone being here. And uh, yeah. All right, so let's see. What do we got? What do we got? Six titles today. Not bad, not bad. Not a major week this week. It was kind of kind of moderate. Still some really good stuff to read. And I kicked off my reading with one that I couldn't wait. Had to had to dive in right when I got it. Alan Scott, Green Lantern, number five. Who is this the one? Tim Sheridan's writing this one. Absolutely loving this. This is the penultimate issue. We just saw the Wesley Dodd Sandman miniseries wrap up. This one's got one more to go. And I think Jay Garrett Flash has two more to go, if I'm not mistaken. Might might be on the same number as this one, if I, if I remember correctly. But, yeah, this this has been amazing. This has been so good. Uh, we left off our character face-to-face -face with his arch nemesis, backstory explained and everything, to a degree with his arch nemesis. Like, power was low, forced to charge his ring on the red lantern that his enemy had there with him. And what we saw on the last page was... Alan Scott Green Lantern with the red crimson flame infused with him. And we get to see the ramifications of that decision as well as an action-packed issue slammed with backstory, just no holds barred. This was so freaking good. And the last page of this one had me put both my hands up in excitement. Was so happy with it. It was a, uh, dude, this has been such a shockingly great story from start to present. Cannot wait to see how it ends. I hope everybody gives this one a shot. All of these Golden Age books have been so freaking good. If they got if they got that logo on them, you can trust them pretty decent at bare minimum. Justice Society of America came out last week, and uh, during out weeks in on Sunday, Sector Twenty Eight Fifteen pointed out it's kind of uh, kind of up in the air what's going to happen with all the Golden Age titles at DC. You know, there's nothing announced that I've seen past these three individual miniseries we know that justice society of america is only going to 12 issues jeff johns is doing ghost machine now and they're introducing concepts and stuff as recent as last week that was supposed to be spinoffs like with legion of superheroes and stuff and it doesn't look like there's anything planned for any of that so hopefully 
we get some announcements or something in a perfect world they would just go get jeremy adams and put him in charge of it that's a perfect world in my mind i don't know what they have planned for him he's currently knocking green lantern out of the park doing great things he's writing the golden age jay garrick flash miniseries doing great things so far, he's proven that he doesn't miss and he knows how to handle multiple characters, the Golden Age characters, modern characters. To me personally, that that would be my solution to the problem, but I don't know what they've got planned. We're just going to have to see. No fish baiting. What is going on, Space Case Cards? How are you doing today? Hope you're doing good. Good to see you in the chat. What is up? Do, 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 do. Your line cut skills were better back then. Definitely not the same with Steranko. Yo, you want to you unpack that comment? <laughs> Steranko uh, requires a special set of skills, and that's covert recording. Covert recording. I win, right? What is going on, J-Med? So, well, I hope you're having a great comic day. So far, so good, for sure. Collecting with dirt, throwing them hearts. Didn't call anyone pimps yet, though. I'm waiting on to do that. Hope you're doing good today, Jersey boy. What is going on? Comics Addict is in the building. What the, ah, I hope you're doing good, Tapia. All right, the next one up, and it was kind of the next one right on the list. It was kind of like heavier reads this week, minus the first two. They kind of read fast, super fun. Green Arrow number 10. When I say read fast, this one flew right through. Joshua Williamson is working on this one, and for the longest time, I felt like he was really crafting the dcu's direction he did dark crisis he's on superman he's on green arrow he was really steering which way the dcu was moving and now it kind of feels like uh everything's calmed down with that i mean he's still on multiple titles but you have big things happening with tom Taylor's Titans. you have mark wade and dan morris you're heading the entire summer event coming up but uh williamson's still doing big things in green arrow you know amanda waller's presence and very much so in Green Arrow, the fact that she's pretty much put bombs in everyone's head. You know, in the last issue, Green Arrow was forced to make a deal with the devil herself in an attempt to find Roy, who went missing. Ollie was kind of bouncing across the multiverse ever since facing his assumed death at the hands of Doomsday back in Justice League 75, about two years ago now. But he made it back home in issue in the first arc of this. That's kind of what the kickoff series was about was where was Ollie after that fight with uh, the infected and the dark crisis kickoff. And now that he's back, he, he's trying to find Roy. Roy's missing. Well, we as the readers know that Roy went looking for Amanda Waller and caught a bullet in the head. Well, apparently she's got Roy working for her. And in the last issue, he made a deal with Waller to tell me where Roy is and I'll help you out. And she said, I want you to go steal this from me. And there was the big reveal in the last issue last page it was like she wants sanctuary for those that don't know sanctuary is this place this ai program that batman set up for any heroes you know when when the job gets too hard when things are too heavy it's a place that they can go to get away from the noise from everything and just like recoup relax the ai programming in there is almost like a, a private therapist so they're not relying on a person to keep their secrets or putting anybody in danger it's a computer system that that you kind of do your therapy through it was the setting for the story Heroes in Crisis. So it holds like very close meaning for Roy Harper. And uh, that's what Amanda Waller wanted Green Arrow to do. So that's where this issue picks up and where it moves forward from. So no, no spoilers today, but you can tell from the cover that there's a large cast of characters in the Green Arrow books right now. The Arrow family is massive. Joshua Williamson is doing just as good of a job highlighting, spotlighting, integrating all of those characters into the story as Jeremy Adams did with his Flash run. If you're a fan of Oliver Queen, if you're a fan of like classic style comic books, if you're a fan of like the, the expanded stuff like that, like the Bat family, the Flash family, the Arrow family, he he's checking off a lot of really fun uh, boxes that you expect in like an ongoing comic series with superheroes. Like it's, it's solid. And uh, some cool action in there, some cool stuff in there. What is going on, Perry's Comics? Hope you're doing good today. Canadian Survivalist is in the building. Ryan Riley, what's happening? Let's see. Green Arrow. Was it Ollie's? Good stuff, cheap. Green Arrow is so good right now. Yeah, solid. Super solid. They better not screw up Roy again. Yo. That guy has been through a lot. That poor character has been through a lot. 
And like, you know, when your comic company has been around for like 80 years, there's been a lot of stuff that's happened, you know, like outside of outside of the continuity, like characters like Hawkman, Donna Troy, Roy Harper have suffered these weird, weird things that happened to their characters as a result of like the actual real world comings and goings of the company. And it's cool how the comics get to play with that and integrate it into the character's life. I always enjoy stuff like that. And that kind of gets dabbled with, with Roy. Justice League of Arrow. There you go. Does Roy have both arms now? He was that his clone. That was about as confusing as Spider-Man in the 90s. Well, for one, I don't think anything is as confusing as Spider-Man in the 90s. And uh, Roy has both of his arms. Ever since his uh, return, specifically from Heroes in Crisis. I don't know. He had both of his arms for a while now. Even back before Heroes in Crisis, I believe. But the book of the week that I'm most excited about is next up on the list. It's, like I said, we're giving it away out of my sheer excitement. Batman Dark Ages, Mike. All red artwork right there on the A cover, Mark Russell. So not sure what we're getting into with this. It's kind of... Where is it? You got it? Cool. Not sure what we're getting into with this. Oh, that's pretty dope. Look. Got the 85-year anniversary of Batman going down this year. That's super dope. So apparently this is going to come kind of like parallel with Superman Space Age in some parts. Space Age takes it takes its story and goes through a pretty decent time length but to the conclusion of this universe. So whatever they do with this DC Age universe, it's going to have to come before the finale of Space Age. So I don't know how much this is going to intertwine into that or if it's all going to come before the coming of the Superman but I do know that the concept of this is like Gotham was supposed to be like a city of tomorrow and it devolves into the seedy, gothic, dark, violent tones that we know it for. And it's going to be cool seeing how Batman intertwines into that. I am super excited to dive back into this universe. Uh, I haven't even opened this book yet. I don't want any spoilers, but I'm going to open it anyways. I just want to see the interiors. See if I get a good shot. Oh, too far. So yeah, I don't I don't know how far again into the timeline. It looks like we're going to very, very, very early Batman, like super early. All right, that's enough spoilers. Uh, I really like Mike Allred's art. A lot of people recognize the art from I think it was Silver Surfer Black that miniseries. Uh, super super dope stuff. Really excited about that one. Leave, drop a comment. Is anyone else checking this one out, or is anybody else check out Superman Space Age yet? That was that was such a shockingly good read. And if I remember correctly. It was almost like it was one of the uh, failed 5G properties. Now, I don't know if Batman Dark Age does or if this is just adding to the success of Space Age. But when they were doing the DC 5G event, they got canceled in the last minute. They had some lingering projects left. And one thing that they were going to do in that event was just like completely lean into newer legacy characters and create a lot and kind of retire out a lot of the old heads for, for that event. But they were going to rewrite some origins like wonder woman was going to have been the first meta human and uh the origin that we saw in superman space age was supposed to be his modern origin for that era but i don't know we'll see in celebration of batman 85th birthday i will be wearing an ascot talking like snagglepuss and disparaging jerry robinson who did not create the joker if he would have created a Joker, would I have the drawing on this napkin? <laughs> Bob Kane's awesome, man. Dark Age, Space Age, are these Elseworlds? Yes, they are. Yeah, these are Elseworld titles. You know, they announced that they're returning Elseworlds. There's nothing on the front of this book that says Elseworlds. There's nothing on the front of the book that says Black Label. We're still waiting on the summer for that imprint to come back to printing on books. I don't know why they shouldn't start doing it immediately. Like, what are we waiting for? But yeah, these are Elseworld titles. Let's see what else we got. Next up, we got one other bat title for me this week. This is a dope cover. Detective Comics issue 1083 by Ron B. Art by Ricardo Federici and something Raphael. Uh, it kind of bounces between artists. You got two stories going. One with Bruce Wayne in the desert. Trip and Billy's trying to find his mind after being poisoned by the Oregon family. And the other story is taking place in a Gotham without Batman, a Gotham that has forgot Batman and a Gotham that is seeing itself heal in the absence of Batman and not necessarily 
because of the absence of Batman, but more because of the presence of the Organ family and their brainwashing of the city. Now, this is a super dope cover. The story is called Eulogy, El Elegy of Sand. And uh, he's sitting there with like the sand castle of Gotham in his hands blowing away. So if you're not a fan of like trippy weird stories, Batman's in the desert uh, trying to literally just go through his mind and face his demons. This character called Dr. Hate is there messing with him for what purpose. I don't know if it's intentional or not. And uh, meanwhile in Gotham, the question is moving her way through the city, trying to make sense of what's happening and, why is all this going on? Where, where's Batman? And done. this is the third issue of Elegy of Sam. First issue, the question just moved through the city. Second issue, she ran into Cassandra Cain. So I'm hoping in this issue, we'll run into a separate Bat Family character and kind of see how they're responding to the city without Batman there. Again, I've just been waiting on Azrael to pop back up. Don't know why Azrael hasn't popped back up already. Dan Waters did that awesome uh, Azrael backup story a while back. He's also currently doing the backup stories in these that give you more history of dr hate who's just a sadistic psycho and he has a lot of vil uh victims along the way that are really wanting revenge on him it's like a victim revenge story in the backup that you know isn't going to work out next up the flash issue seven left for dead title in the book now i don't know if this is the last one of this story arc i seriously doubt it is this the story arc's never going to die. Size Barrier is just driving this book into the ground. Uh, at this point, and I'm picking it up because I'm a completionist for The Flash. I was talking about this before. $3.99 price tag, so it's not even one of the expensive books that drops. Even then, it would be easier to drop this book because I'm bored with reading it. It's making no sense. It's serving no purpose. And just picking up back issues of it down the road for 50 cent or a dollar a piece if I feel inclined to complete the run. But it's, I don't know how bad it is or if it's just how big of a contrast it is from the run that came before this. We had an exceptional flash run with Jeremy Adams. We concluded it with the epic one minute war that was just beautifully done. And then we shift over to size barrier moving at the speed of molasses, telling us, overcomplicating a story for no good reason, uh, explaining things that don't need explanation because they don't exist, and it's just it's just unnecessary. Now, the, the good part is, at the end of the last issue, they introduced the idea that all these weird things are happening because we're first Flash is at the helm. He's behind all of it. So maybe, maybe in this issue, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that now that there's two super speedsters here, you know, we already had a handful, but now we have Wally and Reverse Flash. Now we have both of them. Maybe the book won't move at a snail's pace. Maybe it'll be something that happens, a little action. Like, dude, Cy Sparrier, he's not a bad writer, but he feels, he seems like he's very self indulgent, if that makes sense. Like, it's like he, he wants to just talk, but instead of talking, he's writing. Instead of writing, he's doing dialogue for a comic and he just doesn't stop none of it feels necessary i don't know i feel like he'd be good for maybe like a sandman universe book where nothing needs to be happening without people telling you what's happening but i, I don't know i don't know no clue what he's trying to do when we're seven issues into it no clue those detective a covers have been amazing they have dope comics is in the chat what is up one week till ghost machine oh my gosh I have a huge announcement that uh, I'm not going to announce yet, but for all of you Ghost Machine fans, all of you people that are excited about Ghost Machine, I'll tell you now, like, instead of New DC Day next week, we're going to do New Ghost Machine Day, and there's a reason for that. So be here next week for, for New Ghost Machine Day. We'll kick off the in, uh, the coming of Ghost Machine proper right here. We'll kick it off at 1.30 so be here. You won't want to miss it. Uh, no, no, he's not Brian Michael Bendis. He didn't, he didn't take the underwear off anybody or age anyone's kids up. Slow fast sounds bad to me. Exactly, exactly, exactly. 
Brian Michael Bendis writing drives me insane. Well, it depends on what era, man. Brian Michael Bendis is undeniably a good writer, but he hit a point in his life where he hit certain characters that just were not made for him, and they kept him on him for way, 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 way too long. What is up, Couch and Slouching with Steve Bizzle? I have Rook and Redcoat pre-ordered. Well, you need to add Geiger number one to that list, and then you'll have the whole thing taken care of. But where will we go for DC Day? Also right here. Don't Stay tuned for more information. That's all you get for now, Beckerman. Just hit that little bell down there. Problem solved. We'll keep, I'll, I'll, I'll call you too. I'll keep you posted. You call me and I'll tell you to check the community tab on the channel just for fun at this point. Bendis Miles Morales was amazing. Bendis did so much stuff at uh, Marvel that was amazing. He did Powers was amazing. And uh, undies being given away at C2E2 was not. Yeah, the, we've got Bendis. We're bringing Bendis and we're giving away Superman's undies. Man, that's so weird. So weird. He just wasn't the guy for the job. It was a job for Superman, not Brian Michael Bendis. And I didn't hate his run, as, like his work on Superman as bad as most people did, but like it's apparent that it's not like gauge the room, people. Like listen to the feedback. If all your readers are jumping, shark, or jumping ship, if, and no one's saying that they like it. The general consensus is this is crap. Change it. Same thing for Spider-Man fans that had to suffer through that Nick Nick whoever run forever. Just crazy. It was absolutely crazy. I already have Geiger pre-ordered since the first volume. Here, here, my man. Also, huge news. This uh, this month's Legion loot is like a ghost machine key pack. I got. Some really cool stuff going into the Legion loot for the channel members this month. You know, like the theme, the the Legion loot. So the theme for this this month is Ghost Machine. But of course, we'll have the big time collectible exclusives in there. There'll be an X Men key, so you can check the community tab. I'm letting the letting anybody who sees that, not just members, vote on which key should go in there. The first appearance of Bishop or the first appearance of Jubilee. They're both up on the chopping block, so it's up for you. I hate jumping sharks. Yeah, it's messy. It's really, really messy. Don't do that. The book didn't come out for another week, so literally everyone brought Marvel books to a DC signing. Yeah, that's rough. That's rough. The only thing I miss so far is Junkyard Joe. I have, I have to order it. Wow, dude, that was it was so good. Junkyard Joe was legitimately amazing. Very, 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 very good. Uh, I'll be giving away a complete trade paperback of it next year, uh, next week on Tuesday, amongst other things. Try to get people caught up. Do sharks jumps like dolphins? I think, yeah, yeah, they do on Shark Week. I don't know if all sharks do, but the ones on Shark Week definitely do. I'm voting the first of Jubilee since it's harder to get. I didn't realize they're harder to get, dude. I, God, dude, Becker's here. He can attest to this. I don't know how many copies of the first Jubilee and the first Bishop I gave away at this point. I have I have multiples at all time. I find them all the time. I pick them up all the time for super cheap and just give them away. They're great X-Men keys. It just I don't know. I have great luck coming across. They definitely do on Shark Week. Yes, they do. Oh, the Sharknado thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those Shark Week sharks are definitely built different. We got one more from this week that I'm super excited about. Diving back into the main body of the story with Tom King's The Penguin, issue number eight. For the past three issues, they've done like, I don't know, we kind of just did it in World's Finest last week. You know, they kind of did something similar to it with the Joker year one in a way, just concept-wise. But when Penguin first ran into Batman back in his early days in Gotham, issues five, uh, seven, yeah, five, six, and seven was those first days of the Oswald taking over the Iceberg Lounge kind of just how sadistic he was getting there. Uh, before that, we've seen him crafting his team in, for his return to Gotham to take back over his place as the crime lord over the city. And now that we've done that little origin side note, we're coming back to the main story. He's made it to Gotham. You know, it was this shadowy agency that came to him in issue one and said, yo, since you faked your death and left, things are not like we like them there. You know, we'd rather have the devil we know than the devil we don't. You have to go back to Gotham take back your spot as a crime lord or else. So the issues have been one by one, him putting his team together and how violent and crazy and scary and genius this guy really is along the way has just been showcased. Like the, the way he's able to be a top tier Batman villain is finally explained in this series. Cause until now, like he's just the penguin, you know, the, 
the three foot tall shaped like a beach ball he's got an umbrella you know like the only thing he could defend himself against is the rain definitely not batman but now now we see how and why if you read tom king's riddler one bad day and saw how he handled the riddler and that story that's like what this is we had the penguin one bad day but it was trash yeah, this, please. let me see oh man i think a super small screwdriver i don't know if i got one of those is it is it is it not working what do we do you need new batteries no i want the batteries i don't why i don't think there's batteries in it, it doesn't make no noise oh there it goes it's let's see if we get the batteries out I've got my knife is working good. Okay. Let's get the batteries out of here. Why don't you like it squeaking at you? Mm. Pausing for a for a little bunny emergency. Is this a bunny or a chicken? A bunny chicken. It's a bunny chicken? Yeah. I it's a bunny chicken. I've heard about, have you heard about spider goats? I'm going to tell you about those one day. This is a bunny chicken, but they, they should be safe. But watch out for the spider goats. Why? Does that, does that sound scary? A spider goat? What if a spider and a goat were mixed together? Creepy. Creepy, yeah. Whatever you do, don't Google it. That's a super long screw for such a little bitty toy. Super duper. Spider goats, I'm telling y'all. All right, batteries are out. I can't put that back in, though. Why? Until I can't. It's fine. Go for it. Have fun. Go make your first million. So there was a one bad day ping on one. It was trash. The entire line of one bad day was such a letdown. It started so strong. They started with the Tom King one. It was amazing. Solid nine out of 10 story. Elevated every single character in the book. And then every other one was just not bad. The Clayface one was kind of fun. Most everyone else didn't even get the assignment right. Like the Mariko Tamaki Two-Face one was like someone else's one bad day. It wasn't the Two-Face's bad day. But this right here, it feels like that proper. We need to get like a mini maxi series. Uh, okay, we'll put it down somewhere. Batteries don't go back in. They don't go back in. They don't go back in. That's not how it works. They don't go back in. No, they don't go back in. It broke off. Did you ask for it to come off? Well, that's what you said but anyways this was fantastic it was super dope that's how i think they should have done all of them for those one bad days it's just got tom king to do them one by one by one and it would have been great it would have been really great but uh instead they didn't and now we're stuck with having to buy a 12 issue maxi series to get the same effect but he's doing it he's doing it so good super good highly highly suggest it is it just me or did Flo come in? Uncle Becker, what is going on? Flo Dameron is in the chat. How are you today? See, Monday night is Tom King night, bro. No, 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 no. No, sir. What is going on, Joffrey? How are you today? Penguin's fire. Yeah, absolutely. I love that Legion of Swamp merch on your page. It looks amazing. Yo, thank you. Be sure to pick you up something. Grab you something. That's all new. I'm really surprised how much I've enjoyed the Penguin and Poison Ivy. See, now Poison Ivy, I didn't jump on. Uh Poison Ivy's never struck me as a character that can carry her own title. Stay with me here, but neither is the Penguin. So I only picked up Penguin because it was Tom King, and I was fussing all the way to issue one saying, I don't want a Penguin ongoing series. I don't want to be picking up Penguin. Then I get it. I'm like, this is amazing. So I'm not sure who it is that's riding Poison Ivy. Little one is getting so tired, so tired, needy and tired. Best day of the week. Yeah, so I need to go back and look at who's writing Poison Ivy. I think it's Stephanie Phillips or something. I can't remember. I honestly can't remember. But it wasn't anybody that jumped out at me as a creator that I am absolutely used to, a creator that I that I would have a lot of familiarity with and see the name and chase after them. So I just skipped out on that one. Big Lion Cat is in the building. What is going on, Patrick? I know Patrick's going to be at Q 
Heroes Con this year. That's going to be great. Bunny chickens with barbecue sauce are fire. Oh, I need to try that. Don't Google it. <laughs> Starts to Google it. Yeah, yeah. They're real. It's the whole point. His name is Freckles. They've genetically uh, crisscrossed a goat with a spider's DNA in order to produce spider silk out of the goat's goat's udders. And they've not only done that, but they've actually taken that spider silk and used it in human surgeries, replacing tendons and stuff. And our bodies do not reject the silk and super strong stuff. It's very, very scary. Very scary. Reminds me of like Talladega Nights when he's like, I heard that they put a pig's heart in a guy. You know what that means? A longer life? No, he died, but it sounds cool. Like That's exactly where my brain goes when I heard about spider goats. What is going on, Vince and Simon? How are y'all today? You know, it's good because it's over 20 issues, which is crazy long time in comics these days. Yeah, that is. I want to try it out. And the covers for the Poison Ivy stuff have been amazing. A lot of great covers along the way. Just got back from North Carolina yesterday. I do love G. Willow Wilson's work on Hunger and the Dusk. Is that who's writing it, G. Willow Wilson? I don't know. I don't know. Let me show you this real quick. I, it's been a while since I've got like new stuff up. But I put some of this up on the uh, on the website yesterday. So there's new merch stuff up. I super duper like this, this design. So in the... Uh, and helping me out tinkering with and working with just some cool designs to come up with but it's like a legion of comics come up out of the swamp with this hashtag not swamp thing on there but i got shirts hats and all that stuff i've always have those things on the uh the merch store but i just thought that design was fantastic when it got sent to me it like my dude that is absolutely awesome one thing i've always kind of wanted was just like a shirt that had like the legion of comics uh words not like the traditional logo but just the words like rising up out of the swamp in the shape of the legion of doom headquarters and just kind of like uh, min uh talking about that and that was one of the mock-up ones that came back and i loved it i'm gonna throw that on a on a shirt and merch and stuff so i added that to the the legion of comics dot shop yesterday i'm sure that the link for that is in the description as well but some fun merch and stuff and i needed a new hat and i wanted to order myself a new hat because I, I think it'll work and i mean this one's had a, a very 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 busy year so I'm like, I need to get a new hat before uh, I keep going out in public with my, my dirty work hat. I got my ghost machine hat, but, you know, you get like one hat and it really gets broken and feels right. I want to get a new one. So I put the new logo on a new one. So I got some options. Got some options. What is going on? Kenny B, how are you doing today? So that's definitely something I can check out if you're so inclined to. I'm in North Carolina every day. Yes, guys, a busy guy. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you. Big shout out to the, uh, a friend of mine who helped design it and everything. I don't want to put him out there because I don't want people blowing him up, asking him X, Y, and Z, unless he wants to be asked. Uh, yeah, I don't want to put him on blast. But uh, that's it for uh, for my pickups. So if y'all start dropping the hashtag, we are Legion, we'll get this thing populating some names and we'll draw for the winner. We'll add the bookmarks, I think. Is it? Yeah, this is the week. This is where we pull out the fresh stack. We ran through the entire set of Dan Moore bookmark. So now that means we are on to set number two. So pulling from a completely fresh set of bookmarks. There we go. There, the, 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 there we go. So brand new fresh set. You got uh, all the characters in there, the Bat Family characters, Flash Family, Superman. You got Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel. We got Aquaman and Green Lantern characters. And lastly, the Titans and the Teen Titans. Fresh set of bookmarks. We'll pull one every week to add to the giveaway books as well as trading cards. We've got the uh, stickers that were sent by ABX Comics and Games. We actually added some big ones. So we have, we have the solid ones that we got to get through. So we have... One of the two inches that's going out today, as well as a comic sharing cancer sticker gets added to it. And we'll draw the uh, the trading cards when we get to it. So we got the box of cards. What's that button? Well, and one more ABX Comics and Games button. So the Injustice card goes, gets pulled in there separately. 
Yeah, all right. There's all the stuff. So a lot of cool swag. A lot of cool swag to give away today. And that's all going to get a one lucky winner, courtesy of Augusta Book Exchange for all the extra little freebies and stuff. And then the books that I picked up today to put in the giveaway, show those off, and then we'll pull up the screen share. We've got Batman Dark Age, Frank Quietly variant, super cool cover. I love me some Frank Quietly. That's super dope. Mark Russell, Mike All Red Story, and that's issue one, so you can get started on it right at the beginning. Let's see if I can butcher this name again. Variant cover by Sozo Maki. Number seven, Power Girl. Beautiful, lovely lady cover featuring Power Girl on it. Part of Women's History Month special edition. I guess they're doing a lot of those across the board. But yeah, there we go. Those two will be going to one lucky winner. And then we'll draw the extra stuff. Let me pull in that screen share stuff. Let's see. Stop sharing the merch store. Do, 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 do. Share screen. And let's get the giveaway tool. Share. And then add a screen. Add a screen. Boom. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Got him up there doing the bat to see. Very nice. Why is she even wearing a belt to hold up her belt buckle? Duh. Got to. Weird question there, Scotty. Weird question. Let's see if I missed any comments. Scroll back up. But I hope everybody's having a good day. I do want to remind everybody that wasn't here earlier that Comics Carrying Cancer is going to be in Charlotte, North Carolina this year for Heroes Convention. We will have a booth set up. It'll be uh, table number 1769. That's the weekend of Father's Day, June 14th through 16th. If you can't be there all weekend, try to pop in for the day. Come by the table. Myself, Rob's Fat Sacks of Comics, and DJ Links will all be there live at the booth uh, getting things ready to kick off Comics Carrying Cancer. We have some amazing stuff in the works to share with everybody. We won't be announcing it till we get closer to the events. So be sure to follow Comics Carrying Cancer on Instagram. Of course, I'll keep you in the loop as we go. That's where you can stay the head of the curve. Now, you know, we have these uh, art prints right here, limited to 50 for April April 6th at King Kong 5 in New Jersey, one day only. Limited to 50 Austin LeMay art prints. If they do not sell at the uh, con, if they do not sell out, we will make them uh, available to the uh two people online we're not sure how we're going to do it yet but to find out first and foremost you can always follow comics carrying cancer for all of those details you don't want to miss out on any of that that'll be uh that'll be super cool got mine right there got mine right there gave one away this past sunday on that week's and if you're not aware that we have a lot of people that come by for the new dc day stream but I also stream on sunday nights actually doing reviews of the books having read them the tv shows of the week the movies and all that we have a fun time every sunday night 8 30 at week's end and don't forget, uh, mentioned earlier, we're going to do a special episode next week. We'll, uh, we'll we'll do a Ghost Machine Day in honor of the official Ghost Machine Day happening on April 3rd this year at the Comics Pro Summit. They announced the official day for Ghost Machine kicking off April 3rd with Redcoat, Geiger, and Rook. They have deemed it Ghost Machine Day, so we'll, we'll celebrate that. I got some good stuff lined up for that, some really cool giveaways and all that. And I'll probably do a, a DC Day stream later in the evening that time as well so uh still do the dc day stream but for the for the daytime one run it at 1 30 instead of two and do yeah do ghost machine no yeah, no yeah, sounds good that's what we'll do all right i got enough people in here let's see let me check the numbers we got 30 people entered in the giveaway 28 people watching so uh let's get it rolling so i mean some people threw that in there earlier still included in the giveaway that's good I know not everybody can stay the whole time. So this is free shipping in the continental United States. If you're a channel member, it's free shipping worldwide. If you live outside of the country and you're not a channel member, I'll give you a shipping credit and you can either pay the difference in shipping. You just have to message me to let me know, or you can pay it forward if you win it. Ghost Machine Day next week. That's right. I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited. Been riding hard for Mad Ghost before it was Ghost Machine and uh flow knows and without flow man i wouldn't have a lot of the cool stuff i got he's he's been a very good friend and looking out for me when he was able to go to these uh conventions and stuff i most certainly appreciate you buddy so here we go let's draw this in the winner for this week's new dc day is <laughs> loader's empire hell yeah congrats brother Where's Empire? You know what to do. Message me on Instagram. Just confirm the address you want it sent to. 
All right, so let's get to it. I'm going to pull one of these Injustice cards, and we'll see what we're going to add to the giveaway. Let's start pulling all the extra stuff. So with these, these are awesome cards that were donated by Augusta Book Exchange. Some of them are foil, some of them are not, and I'm just going to pull a random one right off the top. And we got the Flash. Super cool. Is it one of the foil ones? It is not. Are there any foils left? We might have already gotten rid of all the foils, but super cool little Injustice Flash card. That'll get added to the backer board of one. Uh, name a superhero loaders. Name a superhero. You got Titans, Green Lantern, Aquaman, Captain Marvel, aka Shazam, Wonder Woman, Flash, Batman. Name a superhero. And there's two for each one of those. So we're going to pick one out of those two. So, uh, like I pointed out, you've got the Augusta Book Exchange pin that's getting added in there, a button, and a sticker. I'm going to throw a Comics Curing Cancer sticker in there. And I'm going to pull three cards. Now, these are the DC Cosmic cards. There are some of the DC NFT Hero cards in here. But I haven't opened any of those packs in a long time, so I'm not sure how many are left in there. Let's see. First, Great Battles Legends is going in there. Next up. Oh, that's super cool. You got Kronos. Kronos. Very dope. And, and there's reaching for the winner. Reaching for the winner. We're going for one off the bottom. You Oh, nice. You got Martian Manhunter, Heroes from Beyond. Really dope card right there. So I don't see Loaders. Is he still in here? Is he still in here? Let's see. So we are going to pull a bookmark form. That's the last thing to put in there. So uh, let's just mix them up and I'll pull one. Tell me when to stop, chat. Tell me when to stop. Tell me when to stop and I'll pull the first one. First person, tell me when to stop. Let's see. Going, going, going. Going, going, going. Anybody, anybody but a dead body, tell me when to stop. What is going on, Flash by Night? So, stopped right there on. Yeah. It looks like Bruce Wayne and Damien. So, you got a good one. Boom. <laughs> well, Boar said, don't stop. Keep going. So, that bookmark's going in there for you, Loader's Empire, and the rest will be saved for next week and so forth and so on. I appreciate everybody coming by and hanging out. It's been a fun stream. It always is. Next week's going to be a blast. Some super duper, super duper special stuff lined up. Be sure to come by for the uh, Ghost Machine special. And as well, tune in to Sector 2815 right here on YouTube. I'm live with him every other Wednesday for Guess That Key. It's a live comic book game show where you can come by and see if you can uh, guess what key comic everyone brought to the stream fun giveaways very interactive with the chat you participate and play along and uh do some more announcing about next week on that stream tomorrow night if i get everything in order in time but we'll see how it goes again i appreciate everybody coming i hope you all have a fantastic day and until next time as always i'm mark but we are legion <laughs>